Hey everybody, it's Bob Murphy here. Today I want to talk to you about Hurricane Sandy and the gas lines that followed. What I want to claim is that the hurricane per se was not the cause of the gas lines. Rather, the direct cause of those lines was the government response in the form of price controls, or more specifically, warnings that if any gasoline retailer engaged in so-called price gouging, then they were going to get punished. So that's what caused the lines. So what happened when the storm struck? Two things. On the one hand, the supply of gasoline was severely curtailed because distribution channels were knocked out temporarily, meaning it was harder to ship gasoline from the outside into the affected areas. And then even the gasoline that was on hand, that was physically within the, the region, a lot of it happened to be at stations whose power was knocked out. And so even though the gas might have been there in the underground tanks, cars pulling up physically couldn't get it because the power was out and the pumps didn't work. So that's why the supply was severely curtailed. On the other hand, another effect of the storm in the immediate aftermath was that the demand for gasoline went way up. Because first of all, there's a natural reaction of people to hoard, right? Just the, the panic, people are nervous, they want to go stock up on stuff including gasoline. So people who normally would not have tried to go to the gas station because they had half a tank of gas, let's say, in this scenario would try to go fill up because they're nervous that maybe gas is going to run out in two days and they want to get it now while they can. So there's that effect. And also a lot of people who normally took mass transit to work now didn't have that option because the subways had been flooded, the trains might not have been running and so forth. So a lot more people had to drive than otherwise would have been the case. So those two forces together, a supply curtailment while demand was increasing, normally would mean a very much higher market price. And if that's what had happened, if the government had stood back and let market prices do their job, then there would have been no gas lines. The prices might have gone up to who knows what, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars a gallon, at least for a few days after the storm hit, and that would have been unconscionable in the eyes of many people in New York and New Jersey, but there wouldn't have been gas lines. It would have been just as straightforward to go get gasoline at your local station, assuming its power were still on, as it would have been on any other day of the week before the storm struck. It's just the difference would be instead of paying four dollars a gallon, you might be paying eleven dollars a gallon. All right, so the lines were caused by the price controls because by keeping the price artificially low, keeping it below what the new market clearing level would have been that would have balanced supply with demand, the government caused a shortage. That's what a shortage is in economics. It's when people want to buy more units of the product than producers want to sell. And that happens when the price is held artificially below what the market clearing level is. So because of the new situation, supply getting knocked out and demand increasing, the new market clearing price would have been much higher, but the government didn't let that happen. Now to see why this is bad, the social consequences of this, consider that had the price been allowed to rise, people in neighboring regions would have had an incentive to ship a lot more gasoline into the affected areas. They would have figured out different ways to get more gasoline in there than they actually did in real, in real life with the price controls in effect. Right, people are very ingenious in businesses and other crafty people who aren't normally even in the gasoline market. If they saw that gas was selling for $4 in a neighboring state and it was selling for $11 in New Jersey and New York, they would have figured out ways to ship gasoline from the $4 place to the $11 place and earn that spread. And it would have happened on a much grander scale than what we saw happening here and there. Uh, in the actual wake of Hurricane Sandy because they didn't have that huge profit opportunity. Even putting that aside, the amount of gasoline physically on hand in New York and in New Jersey when the storm struck would have been higher had people not thought there would be price controls because retailers in the gasoline market would have heard the meteorologists warning about how bad the storm was going to be and they would have thought there's a decent chance that our supply lines might get cut off, subways could be flooded and so on, the market clearing price of gas might jump up to nine, ten dollars a gallon at least for a few days. In that scenario, 
we want to have a lot of gas on hand. So we're going to bulk up our inventory the week before the storm hits and we're going to bulk it way up and carry it a lot more gallons of gasoline than we normally do on the off chance that this storm is really bad and the price spikes. And then we earn a, you know, we make a killing off of that higher inventory. So that incentive also was muted because the people in the gas market knew full well, looking at New York's history, but also all around the country, this is very typical that when there's a storm or, or a kind of natural disaster that normally would lead to skyrocketing prices on essentials, the government will often come in and say, if we catch anybody gouging, you're going to get in trouble. So the retailers in the New York and New Jersey markets who sell gasoline would have thought that would be the case in this situation also. Even putting that aside, even if we take the amount of gallons of gasoline as a fixed number, nonetheless, having a high market clearing price would have been better than having price controls in place because the high price encourages conservation among the buying public and that's exactly what we want to have happen in a situation like this. You want $11 gasoline in the day, on the day after the hurricane hits because then people who have half a tank say, Phew, I'm not paying $11 a gallon, I'll wait till the price comes down. I can get by for a few days with what I got in the tank. Whereas the person who's literally running on fumes, you want him to be able to quickly get to the front of the line and fill up, not even fill up, but just maybe put in four or five gallons to tide him over until hopefully the price comes down a few days later once the situation recovers a little bit. So that's exactly what would have happened had prices been allowed to rise to their market clearing level, is that people who really were about to run out of gas and their car was going to break down would have seen no long lines because everybody else would have been, whoa, I'm not paying $11. And then even people who did drive up to the pump probably wouldn't have filled up unless they were going to drive 80 miles that day. So that's the uh, situation that would have occurred had market prices been allowed to do their job. And again, that's exactly what we want people to do in a situation like this. We want everyone to be extremely careful about every last drop of gasoline that they go buy right after the storm hits. And that's what the market price would have done had the government let, its, let it do its job. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. This has been Bob Murphy.